What is up, guys? Welcome back to part two of our adventure through the cosmos of developing a driver for the Raspberry Pi. In this tutorial series, I'm showing you guys how to make a driver for the Raspberry Pi that has access to the peripherals of the GPIO interface. Now, I know these drivers already exist. This is unnecessary work, but I think it's a really good teaching point on how to make drivers on the Raspberry Pi that access things that we may want them to do or to provide custom functionality in the kernel. In my previous video, we talked about why drivers were necessary and then eventually how to get the build system of the Raspberry Pi's kernel headers to run such that we had a hello world kernel mode module. But the problem with that was that it was largely useless and that when we opened it, it turned on and we closed it, it turned off. But from the user space side of the Raspberry Pi, we were unable to use it. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how we create an interface into a kernel mode driver. So if you remember in our previous video, we were trying to access the address down here, obx 3 f 20 This is the address of the GPIO interface peripheral in physical memory. The problem, as we talked about before, is that by trying to access this address from user space in the Raspberry Pi, we illegally cross two boundaries. We legally cross the memory boundary between user space and kernel space, and then we also legally cross the memory boundary between kernel space and actual physical hardware to the GPIO. So to solve that, we create drivers, and drivers provide this kind of seamless interface where we can close our eyes and go touch that part of the processor and not get yelled at by the processor, right? So the question is then like, okay, we have this driver, but how does user space actually talk to the driver to get access to kernel space? And the way we do this is using two kinds of methods. There's one called a device file. Device files live in slash dev. They look like a file, but they're not actually a file. They're a special file that maps into the kernel and provides read, write, et cetera, functionality into the kernel that the kernel can then do things with that input from the user space. The problem with that is that device files are meant to map to a single physical device, right? So if you look at like slash dev SDA or slash dev TTY USB zero, um, they are meant to map to like actual physical things they are called device drivers because they map to devices. Now there's a different system we can use called the proc FS file system and the ProcFS file system is actually meant to do more generic things, not ma mapped particularly to a single hardware interface, but instead more generically used to provide info about the OS to user space from the kernel, and then act as a control interface for more generic software type things. So for this tutorial, we're going to be creating a ProcFS file in slash proc that we can read and write from, and it will provide output and input to the kernel mode driver that will control the GPIO interface. And just to give an example of what you know the proc FS file system looks like, I'll pull it up real quick here in my VM. I'm going to turn off my Raspberry Pi for a second. It's still on, just running in the background. Um, so we'll go to slash proc. I see a bunch of files here. None of these are actual files. These are actual all special mapped interfaces to the kernel that do certain things for us. If I do like cat proc net TCP, that call actually goes into the kernel the kernel parses all of the connections that are running on TCP, and then we get this output here that goes to user space. So it feels seamless, it feels like a file, but it's actually not. So we're gonna go on a Raspberry Pi and make a low level learning GPIO procfs entry that will take our data and parse it, and eventually it'll control the GPIO interface via that. So what I'm gonna do is get out of here, and I'm going to pull up my Raspberry Pi. So I SSH into it just like before, and I pulled up LX terminal. So we'll go to our driver here, and I've made some modifications to our GPIO driver here. I will push these to get at the conclusion of me recording this video. So if you remember from before, we had the very basic bare bones driver where we had the init function, we had the exit function, and the init and exit function said, hello, I'm turning on, and then hello, I'm turning off, and then they would return. And then via the module init and module exit functions, we were able to hook those into the boot up of the driver. So when we did ins mod for install module and rm mod for remove module, these two would execute, right? So what we've done is we've added some additional code that provides the kernel mode driver the instructions to create the low level learning GPIO file to the proc FS file system. So we're going to start here, right? We're going to walk through this code and kind of tell you what it does. So we have a variable in global called low level learning proc, and that is just a proc dirt entry. We use that to track the object that comes out of when we create a procfs file system file, right? 
by running proc create, we specify the name of the proc interface that we want. By saying 0666 in Octal, we're able to let anyone use this because I want not only root, but other users to be able to access our GPIO driver. Um, null is just a set of flags that we send to the proc create function. We don't want that to have any value. It doesn't do anything for us. And then we set the parameter here to the address of this low level learning proc FOPS structure. Now, if you're doing this on an old system, by old, I mean before Linux kernel 5.4, this is going to be a little different. This is written for after Linux kernel 5.4, where instead of using a file operation structure, we use a proc op structure. Okay, so we have the structure here. And what the structure does is it tells us when the user reads our file, so when they type like cat procfs low level learning GPIO, it will run this function. And when they write to it, it will run this function. So now we have the special file that if it's read to, things will happen. And if it's written to, things will happen. Okay, cool. So now we look at what actually happens. So if the file is read by the user, we're literally just going to say, you know, hello, cool, here's your data. Okay, we're going to give it seven bytes of hello. And the way that works, the low level learning read function takes as input a buffer from the user that we're going to be able to put data at, right? Because it's be, it's reading, so we need to provide it data that it's going to have read, and then the size that it asks to read. And then an offset pointer into how much it's already read. We're not gonna worry about that right now. So then we run this function copy to user. So because we're in kernel mode, we need to copy data out of kernel space into user space. We're gonna use this copy to user function to copy to the user space buffer, hello new line, and it's seven bytes long. And we also have to return the length that we have written, which is seven. Okay, this one isn't as important because I don't really care what happens when the user reads our procfs file system. What I do care about eventually is I want the interface for our GPIO controller to be that I write a pin number, comma, one or zero, and then that turns on or off, depending on one or zero, that pin, right? Pretty cool. So the user is going to then have to write to our procfs file to make that happen. So similarly, when we write to a procfs file, this function gets ran and there are three parameters. Because it's being ran as a file, right? It's being tracked as a file. There is a, a struct file that represents the file as a user sees us. There is the user buffer, right? The user is writing data to our kernel mode driver. So this contains the data the user is writing. This contains the size that the user is writing. And then this again is that offset we're not gonna worry about. So I actually have a data buffer that I control myself. So I need to have somewhere that once the user gives me data, I put that data, right? So every time that they write to me, I clear out this data buffer to make sure that the user does not see other data that used to be in there. If the size that they write is larger than my maximum size, so let's say they gave me 40, 96 bytes and I only can control, I can only take on 1024, I want to cap off how much they give me to prevent buffer overruns in the kernel, right? That would not be good. And then similar to how we did a copy to user before, we're going to copy from user. The destination is the data buffer in kernel mode here. Source is this user buffer here, and size is the now capped off size that they gave us from the function, right? And what we'll do with that data is we'll say in D message, oh, hey, welcome to the driver, you said our data, just to confirm that we are able to take data from the user and put it into the kernel. And then also we need to return to the user the amount of data that was written so that the new interface for the function write can properly behave, right? So now that we've set up these two functions to happen when reading is happening and when writing is happening, we use proc create when we start up our driver. And then also just like in reverse, if we exit the driver, we want to make sure that we cleanly remove the procfs file system file by using proc remove and then returning. So with that being said, we've created this driver. We can do make here to build it. And it does take a little bit of time because we're now including more header files than we used to. Not a big deal, something to be aware of. A couple errors here. Again, I'm being a bad programmer. I should be checking the output of copy to user and copy from user, but I'm not, unfortunately. That's just something we're gonna all have to live with. Um, so we'll do sudo uh, lsmod grep for low level learning to confirm that it's not running. It currently isn't good. So we'll do sudo insmod on our kernel mode object or our KO. This should run and not crash the kernel. Good, and just to confirm, we are still running, awesome. Um, so now if you ls proc, we now have 
low level learning GPIO in the procfs file system. Pretty sweet. So now we actually can cat this file. Oh, excuse me. We can cat this file and we will get hello infinitely. That's probably a bug, but it gets the point across. Great. Um, but the more important point that I want to make is that, you know, we can pump data into the driver from user space, right? Like from the terminal, we're still in user mode here. We're in bash. Um, hello there, kernel. And we can write that with the caret driver into proc low learning GPIO, right? Boom. So we'll do that. I'm going to do echo tack n to remove the new line because otherwise my example looks pretty gross. So there's no new line here. We just say hello there, kernel, and write it into that file. Cool. Now, again, that file does not actually contain this data because it's not a real file. It's a, oh, excuse me. I tried to execute it. I tried to cat it. Um, it's not a real file. It still says hello. But what we can see, though, is that in D message at the very, very end, you said hello there, kernel, and that got brought to the kernel mode driver and we printed it out. Cool. So we're one step closer to our GPIO driver being complete. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to parse the data that we send to the driver and use it to turn an LED on and off via the GPIO peripheral. So in this video, we explored, this is how we interface with a driver. We use either a device driver file in slash dev or a procfs file in slash proc. And then we set up special functions that get ran when we read or write from that file so that we have, you know, user data is able to be stored in the kernel. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate it if you hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week when we finish this up in episode three by making the GPIO interface actually flip bits on and off that change peripheral interfaces. Thank you so much, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye.